1838, that's an easy year to remember, my birth year, so I always go back to that. Shabertius, <laughs> then they became, and 80 years later, Shabertius and Hermopopola, and then Dr. Whitner, about 20 years ago, who wrote all the Catholic books, said no, they're all Shabertius, and then in 05, this major thing that comes out in England and Europe called the General Orchidaceae Era put them back into all Shilberthias and Myrmopopola. But then finally, they made up their decision in 07, they voted Shilberthias out, they don't exist anymore. So if you got a sham, it doesn't exist anymore because it's a change a Lelia. So now there's Lelias and Myrmopopola, I'm gonna tell you the difference. Okay, at the same time that changed, a lot of other things changed, so everything got new names and new genuses and new genera. So any hybrid that had a name with one of those old names had to get a new name. A family name like Catlia, Phalaenopsis, that's a genus name. They had to, have, and if you have a made up name like Alilia Catlia, that's called a Nato genus, had all new names. But everything is going to be up to date today. So please, please, please don't get hung up in all those names, okay? Because it's not important, okay? Okay. Okay, okay now we're going, aren't we? Thank goodness. What we're going to do is going to illustrate the species of both genera, how they can be hybridized, and then we're going to do some of the possibilities of what they might look like when we put them together and cross them. Is that okay? Okay. okay. Thank you. Now we got a plan. Okay, fair credit. Of this information, I only know a little bit about one little area of orchids. There's, there's orchids, that they say there's 35,000 different species, and then they're hybridized, so there's hundreds of thousands of different crosses. But all these people help contribute information to the program. Chilberkias, which are now Lelias, so I call them Shambo Lelias, have a little higher altitude where they grow. They have oral bracts, which are structures surrounding the flowers and solid pseudobulbs. Where Myrmacopla have a little lower altitude in general, they don't have those floral bract structures, and their pseudobulbs are hollow. So in this, if you imagine a carrot. If you slice a carrot, you hope to get a carrot slice. That would be a Shabalalia. But if you sliced it open, it was hollow in the middle, that would make it a what? Yeah, one of those things, yeah. <laughs> one of those things, good, okay. Okay, so that's just a general summation, but the real difference between what we have here today is some have, and some of these hollow pseudobulbs I think are all gone off the tables already, and some are solid. Most of these are solid now, hybrids. And what makes them so great and so special are Sham or Myrmacopla, mostly large and sun-loving, but all not large. They're tough, they're hard, they, they have ridged leaves, they're leathery, they pass it on to their hybrids, so they're harder for bugs to eat, and uh, various uh, diseases to uh, permeate or bother. Elongated flower stalks, they bloom at the end, and the petals and sepals are usually wiggly or curly. And when you cross them, it takes that into the hybrid. So when we cross that with a beautiful Catlia for Mother's Day or Easter or Christmas, you get a combination between the two, and that's what many of these things are. Okay, easy culture, tough to kill. I think they're the easiest of all orchids to grow. We leave ours six months a year. We leave Sarasota where the temperature and the joke in the summer is, stick your head in the microwave and turn it on, and that's what Sarasota's like in the summer. So we go to North Carolina and we leave, leave the orchids for six months. So the flowers usually last two, three weeks. Some can go a month, but not all. And they're interesting, different in a whole new world of Chambol, Lelius, and uh, hybrids waiting to be discovered. Where did they come from? Very close to you all in Mexico, Central America, Honduras, Nicaragua and they go through Panama all the way down to the top half of South America, as far down as Bolivia and Peru. But then they get a little bit cooler where they, those come from. There are 10 Myrmacopola species. Remember, Myrmacopola has hollow pseudobulbs. Hollow, right? Good. First, how do you say Myrmacopola? Well, you can say Myrmacophila. Okay, I can say Myrmacophila. Myrmacophila or Mirma, <laughs> no matter what you say, tomato or tomato, you're not wrong. Are you? No. No. Okay, Albo Perfria, we have some here and they're gone now. It's from the Grand Caymans, it's white with the purple lips. And then we have its cousin, Thompsoniana, they're 
So I now two is yellow, and um, for the purple, let's present the Oreo form. Someone's got that from that corner, which doesn't have the uh, purple lip. But they're all cousins from the Caymans. They have hollow pseudobulbs to the cenus. Right. And which one is the real to the cenus? Because of a gene pool where they grow, there's a gene pool. Human beings in South Africa have a different gene pool than the gene pool of the Alaskans in Northern Alaska. The gene pool, and then when people reproduce, we pass on that gene pool for certain areas of the native uh, human beings, not people moving in. Same way with orchids. So when they come from a certain area, they carry some of the same characteristics or colors with them. So some of these, depending on which area of Mexico they came from, or uh, Central America or Belize. Okay, Grandiflora is its cousin. You'll notice it's similar, but it has open, this is, the lip is called labellum. This is the lip. This thing that looks like Jimmy Durante's nose, you have to be old enough to remember Jimmy Durante. Okay, if you're not laughing, you're too young. Okay. This is the labellum, this is the, 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 the uh, nose or the column. Okay, that's open. Grandiflora, what I just showed you, to see this is closed. Okay, this is Exolotaca, which is very, very twisty. Um, the leading man in Mexico, Dr. Carlo Valle Compta, says it's all Tibicinus, but the American Orchid Society and the Royal Horticultural Society in London says no, they're different, so we accept them as being different. Then their cousins, Bryciana, very similar to Tibicinus, different color, Belize, Costa Rica, different colors depending on the area, the different gene pools called the locusts. And its cousin, Kristin and I, now you see the combination of the open labellum, the open throat, and the column. So we got the pollen cap will be down here. Here's the labellum, the throat, and the lip. And here's the, I'm sorry, the pollen cap's there. And here's the column, like the nose. OK, so that's open. So the combination between the two, Tibicinus and Bryciana have the closed labellum, the grandiflora, Christy and I have the open labellum. They're all pretty. I like the grandiflora, and Christy and I, I just think they make better hybrids, personally. Okay, Galeantiana from Guatemala, Mexico. Soyeride was a species, but then it got demoted. Aww. Thank you. <laughs> The reason is there's still a couple of nurseries selling it for over $100. And I paid 150 200 for mine, and then it turned out to be a, a hybrid with like an orphan, nobody knows its parents. So soya rye doesn't exist anymore. It's pretty, but it's, it's not authentic. And so we don't charge, you know, again, that money. The last of the group I thought this was the most insignificant one called Wenlandii from Central America. It's an upside down flower. And it's just sort of brown and small and upside down. These are the rigid ridges. That have, these pollen caps are red. Normally they're yellow. But when you cross it, that little thing becomes some very, very wonderful hybrids. And the whole basket, and I don't have the picture I showed you yesterday, I crossed it with a red one. And you get just a, a basket or a pot full of these red, bright flowers. It makes wonderful hybrids. It doesn't look like much of itself, but it makes wonderful hybrids. And now, <laughs> Nobody want their drum? <laughs> Thank you, that was good. There's a good drum there. Fifteen Chambolalia species are released, and that's the way it was earlier today, because they just added another one a couple months ago. Okay, quickly. Wallacei used to be called Wallacei, and they changed its name to Columbiana. Anybody guess why? <laughs> good, yeah. see? Mariana said you're all so smart, and you are. So that's uh, that's Columbiana now, preparing some of the hybrids here. A lot of you'll notice a lot of these reds come from Colombia, and I suspect there's a common ancestor in the evolution of these orchids. And I think at night there's a lot of hanky panky from these orchids coming out because there's an awful lot of reds that are crazy. This is a very expensive orchid of ours called Crispa alba. And then the name got changed to Lelia Crispa Alba, because remember, Shaburkias don't exist anymore. And then they changed the name Crispa to Gloriosa. And then my tag fell apart because I kept erasing and changing it. So it's hard to keep up. And a lot of frustration. And sometimes it's just important to enjoy orchids. Heidi Eye, another red from Columbia where they run around at night. 
Little Miami Eye, there's a gentleman here who has a Little Miami Eye now, also from Columbia. It's sort of interesting. The lip down below is recurved. This yellow thing is called a disc. And uh, this, sometimes they're yellow and sometimes it doesn't have a disc. Here's the pollen cap. Here's the col column, like the nose. These are called side lobes. This is significant. It's truly a little mani eye, and there's many that are mislabeled. It has three <laughs> colors here, and these flare out. It's one of the distinguishing characters. The eye? I'm so glad this is working. Okay, the only spot at that, that is one. I was showing you Wellesley here that become these fantastic, expensive, big plants. Um, and I think I'm the only one that sells them, I think. Anyway, dramatic, but it's a small flower, it's mostly upside down, but it's the only spotted one. What's unique about it is everybody in this room is different because you have a different a fingerprint. Every one of these, if you ever counted all these dots, everyone has a different pattern, everyone has different dots. There were two all of us known in the world, they were worth thousands and they both died. And the people that had them lost them so way. Anyway. Rosea or Rosea, however you want to say, another red from Colombia. This is sort of interesting. Uh, we have orchid chat rooms all the time. Mariana, somebody recently posted, this is by Rosea, and it wasn't, but they don't want to know it. It's the smallest of these flowers. It's cup-shaped, and these have no shine or shape. It looks like these sandpapered the color off them. It's the most significant and the smallest. It's the only thing that makes Rosea Rosea. So there's a lot of misidentification. On eBay, probably 85 to 90% of the Shavirkias people are selling are incorrect. So anyway, we talked about Superbias before from Mexico. This is sort of interesting. I was talking about this over here, the all before the Superbias, there's a couple left. They're a little more uh, thin, thinner sequels of petals, but they make a dramatic flower and they make an interesting hybrid, particularly when crossed with a white cattleya. But then something happened a month or two ago. Now the actual color of this is wrong. This is from the new, somebody just wrote up and got awarded that this is a new species of Shavirkia called Albingeri, Albingeriana. <coughs> and it's just been written up and now but nobody I'm confused. The real color of that is pink. So that when they printed that document, which I copied it from, the, the printer got the color dye wrong. Looks like that. Here's the Permian, and here's Halvin Gariana, and I basically can't tell the heck the difference. And the four judges, can you imagine what a mess this is going to be? Anyway, it's a pretty flower and makes wonderful hybrids, but then you're looking at the world's newest Shambolalia, Halvin Gariana. Two the balls. Okay, now we have some hybrids. I'm going to try to move a little bit. They can hybridize with anything in the Catley Alliance. Uh, that means like all the cousins, including themselves and each other, Catlias, used to be Guarians, but they split that when all this happened in 05 and 07, and Cyclias split off to Procyclias, so it can combine, combine with those, Grasabolas or Brassabolas, however you want to say it, tomato, tomato, Rigolalia, Quartonias, Calvertrons, which used to be Diacriums, Epis, Barcarias, anything in the Catley Alliance is theoretic, theoretically gained to be hybridized with the Sham and could be mixed together. <coughs> so, I want to look at what happens when we hybridize them together and see what they might look like. Just a few ideas. Hybridizing orchids is like cooking. The more ingredients involved in the recipe, the greater the depth, the variety, the complexity, the taste. Just so an orchid, the more complex the cross, the more species involved, the greater the variety, because the gene pool is more complex, and the seedlings have variety. Sometimes, like this Mickey Spreckles, every one looks not related to the other one. Okay, if you cross a Lelio with a Lelio, or a Myrmacophil with a Myrmacophil, you still get the same thing. But if you cross a Lelio Sham with a Myrmacophil, then you get a Myrmacolelia. Okay, here's a Lelia with a Sham with a Sham, with a Mani Eye with Superbians. You saw both of those species, and that's called Curly Head. It's a hybrid that came out sort of tall with tall flowers, but a wonderful display. Here's one with, you can guess those spots came from the spotted one from Jamaica, and Ancepts, which is very, very popular, particularly in California where it gets sometimes a little cooler like it does here. Splendid Spire comes out of Santa Barbara Orchid State. Remember, Ancepts has a lot of variety. 
So all the children look differently, write your names on them, and then they can sell them for more money. And here's Sam and Rose. I like that very much. Sam and King sell that differently, and people want both. My favorite for old fashioned. Okay. So a lot of children, they're all different. Here's Mimicovalia, a Mimicopola, the Ross with a Chavovalia called Fuchsii. Comes from Mexico, the common form. There's a gal in Houston, Texas who has Chavo fever really badly, and she posts a lot of these. And this, somebody said her this form of Fuchsii. You'll see her name on some of my slides because she puts a lot of slides on the internet and gave me permission to use them. So we can cross Lalias with the Cattleyas like people wear for corsages or Miramacopola. And see, we get two different groups. This is called <coughs> Nato genus, Nato genera, because it's an artificial combination of the two, man made mostly. Louise Fuchs, we brought some, I think there's a few still here. Um, Wheezy has got an AM, that means an award in American, the American Orchid Society. And here's our selfie. <coughs> I had this on a bench where we used to grow, and somebody was doing a show and said, hey, we need some flowers, can I grab one? And then they called me, guess what? I got an award of merit. Because these make very dramatic flowers and very great displays. There are a lot of, here's a form we have that I'd like better, it makes to be a better flower. And in a couple of minutes, I'm gonna show you it became the mommy of something else I'd like very much. And its baby is used as a hybrid with something else that's one or two plants for less. Okay. <laughs> And this is what I'm telling you, um, Raymond Burr and his partner, Robert, named this for me. Again, different children, it's crossed with Purparata, which has hundreds of different forms. So there's all these different forms of this particular fall storm, from multi and Purparata. This is Mary Storm, there's a, there's a lot of variety in this, but it's one of my favorites for that gorgeous, big, deep, beautiful lip, the labellum, Captain Gloria and Timosina. with Shams. And this is, I told you about uh, Jean Finale in Houston, and somebody sent her this, is the Dosa with Superbiums, that one I showed you, the pink from California. And it looks sort of like a Dosa, but it's got the pink lip, and a lot of these Dosa hybrids carry the scent with them, and that's particularly new. So she goes and kind of register it. So of course, being Jean Finale, she registered it. It has, in England, we register everything, the Grand Finale. You get it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Leave it to me. Great gal. Yeah. And now we get more complex. Now we're mixing three different genera together. Three different types of orchids, if you don't know what I'm saying. Okay, with our shams, uh, with the salicidobos, and with the mirmacopo, with the holocidobos. Kimberly Michelle, Seagull is the nursery of Raymond Burr and, and Robert Partner, uh, Gelada and Volteriana. Uh, this is what got me into shops to start with, the first time I saw this redhead. And it's a combination, it's got three different types of cattleyas in it. Diamond head crossed with Tixie, a diamond head with undulated skitter eye. So it's got a combination with three different types of groups of orchids. So it's got to be a little more complex. Doug Lacey, a minute ago I showed you <coughs> Lancer, I said I didn't care for it very much, but it became the um, mom of this cross, with, when somebody in California put it, a red fiat, you make your own hybrid, and then the society, I think it was Santa Barbara, they named it to one of their beloved members who passed away. Now, whatever you do that, you let can register it as a memoria, and we have some memorias here, I'll show you at the end. Okay, so Doug Lacey, and the sun and the bright light, the orange, it makes a very type of, hey, look at me type flower. Corinna was in the storm, we were just playing around and making hybrids when we got started, maybe 10, 12 years ago, doing our hybrids, and shared with some friends in Hawaii, and we got a call from uh, Maui, not Maui, um, here, one of, those, uh, one of the islands, our friends at one of the AOS just awarded it with an AM. So also, three genera, still a combination of three different types, so we're getting a complex gene pool, Bicodias and Scatlias, on um, the edge of Catnipula, by the way. And Claude made this in Jamaica, named it for me. Capri, which has Bretonia, a little red hybrid, and Bryciana in it. Another combination with three, Brassopla and Colocron. And of course, this is a Marvin Gerber, Marvin Gerber and his wife come from Houston, and the Houston Orchid Society. He used to be the head officer of the American Orchid Society. And this one, oh, look at that name. That's a strange name. Why is it that? Anybody? 
It hasn't been done yet. So after I did this last program, I go, that's really dumb of me. I went home and I made it. So I can't register until it gets big and blooming. But anyway, we have a couple genera named for us. There's a Stormara, there's a false Stormara. I want to, if, that, if I do that before somebody else can do it, that would be a marriage Stormara. And here's a Marvin Berberara that never got registered with Nidosa. Samurai Sea God came from Raymond Burr, Angelata, and Golden Hero. Edith Spence went into another whole generation, a whole new group because it crossed the Pseudovalias. And that's one of the parents of uh, uh, one of our crosses we made. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder, according to Shakespeare, or I think Sylvester Stallone maybe said One of the most famous people. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. This is a couple things we like recently, but also new things are always reading. Graphs Fusion, which is Disto and Angelata, has fantastic cardboard quality with that beautiful two different shades of purple or lavender. Sam Boanga, Mary Lou. Yes, sir. Mary Lou taught Sam me Boanga. something. What is Sam Boanga, Mary Lou? It's a province in the Philippines. I never knew that. Yes. <laughs> so I brought her one. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And Curly had, which is interesting, with the red yaka because it had that deep purple in the throat crossed with an orange and the yellow. It's just such an interesting. Okay, here's another Mary Storm, totally different than the other one, probably my absolute favorite one. Because Mary puts up with me all these years, and it's not easy. Okay, here's your shop hybrid. See, all these things are still waiting to be made. These are all Catlia genera in the Catlia alliance, which means they're cousins. And someday it's all going to be breeding together. You're going to have all combined, and they're all going to be fantastically different. The sky is the limit. Okay, how are we going to grow them? That's important. Some of you, many of you, are going home with them. The most important thing is good drainage. Most of them can be on slabs or a plaque, which means you stick them to something, or you stick them to a tree or a basket, or you can put them in a pot. You just water them differently because they hold the water differently. They don't want to be sopping wet all the time. Flourish under brighter medium light. All mine grow in Catlian type medium bright light example. Uh, for example, they like, they want good air circulation. A uh, little green, a little bit, a little air. They don't want to be just no air at all. And they naturalize well here because of your temperatures. Many people, we did a program yesterday if you were here, but you could actually put them on your trees and, and, and uh, landscape with them and do very, very well. In Sarasota, some of the more affluent people who live on the Gulf Coast, they could say, I landscape with my orchids. We have orchids in our trees. And it's very affluent type of thing and very fancy when you can have that and all these tropical plants growing in your trees. Important, we're discovering more and more, and I discovered this when I was on the Texas tour a couple years ago. Shops do not like to be totally dripping wet. They require more frequent watering in order to prosper, or grow, and bloom. They don't appreciate being totally dry. They're not a cactus. Definitely not too dry, but not continuously dripping wet. And a gentleman yesterday, I don't know if he's here today, asked me the same question that I've heard of in Texas time and time again. It was a beautiful flower. It's never bloomed together. I bought it. It never bloomed. I say, how often do you water? Some of the people said once a week. But many of the people said once every two weeks. And recently, a lady called me in California and said, I can't grow them. They don't do well. I said, well, how often do you water? She told well, it's sort of cold here. I'm told not to keep them wet. So I water once a month whether they need it or not. <laughs> and I go, I water my cactus more than that. <laughs> but we don't grow cactus for the town. But they, they, if, you, uh, if you keep your shops dry, they're going to die or not move. The exceptions of both the items a couple of you people got must be mounted because it wants to get wet and dry immediately. Lyontii, which I didn't bring, has to be potted because it wants to be more wet. I grow strictly when I do my orchids, our orchids, in Orchiata. I was thrilled to discover your society in Tipa, Texas recommends and sells, and, and we brought their Orchiata bags here today. Anyway, here's one of my shams when I divide and break them up. After two weeks, look at those wonderful new green roots. I'll be honest to say it was the beginning of the growing season, and I always start with uh, KLN or Super Thrive or something and give it a good start or a little fertilizer. That's some of that plants after four weeks. Look at those 
what you want, if your orchid is not going to grow, it's never going to bloom unless you have roots. At the root, R-O-O-T, of healthy orchids is a good foundation. And Orchiana seems to do it. Here's the seedling I was talking to a couple of you about earlier. I do little, the fine bark here, my little tiny orchids. I use a little sponge rock just to let a little air and water go through. In six months, I can pull it out of the pot and look like that and just pop it into a bigger pot with bigger bark. And to me, that's awesome because look at the roots. That means it just wants to grow and bloom as fast as it can. Well, would you prefer, this was a university study in New Zealand, this little spindly thing, this is Phalaenopsis, or these big healthy roots. I know we all want big healthy roots, don't we? Yes. And this is the last page of the Orkiana ad. They did a composite picture of a Phalaenopsis here in a pot, one with Orkiana and one without it, to show the difference, just showing why uh, the Orkiana does so well. And if you haven't grown an Orkiana, they have smaller bags to try it. I've never had a person try it who didn't say it was the best stuff I've ever used. Okay, and this is just at the end, just to tell you, we go around the country, we go around Florida, we have a series of, of Shambo programs. This one's called Shambo Love 101, then there's Shambo Sex 102, we show how to make hybrids, and then we have one on the fantastic variety, and then we finally have a quiz show called Shambo's Right or Wrong, where we give prizes. So sometimes people invite us back. We've been on the old circuit, the Texas tour one time, we're near the end. But we hope if they ever invite us back, or if Tip of Texas and the Courage of the Vice back, we maybe we get to do one more program in Texas before we're done. So we have a lot of these programs we do around. We started 20 years ago, they were jokes, and now they're so <laughs> And just, um, if we turn the light on for a moment, and somebody near the lights just flip. There's a few things left that is fine if nobody wants them, but I think a couple people missed a couple good things. I showed you about the violations over there that are really dramatic. In a bucket for months, but you soak it, and then either you pot it right and you soak it every couple days to get it started. Or if you have the room, we have sheets back there that Mary, Mariana brought, where you soak it, put it in an empty pot, just an empty pot, medium bright light. And every day or two, in the rainforest, it rains several times a day, right? And then most of these starts hanging loose in the rainforest. And so all those roots drip dry, right? And so it rains, wet get dry, rain, wet get dry. So you spritz them once or twice a day with light fertilizer or KLN or Super Thrive. And in two or three weeks, you start to get these new wonderful green roots. Take a sterile knife or a sterile syrup scissors. You can't cut all your organs with the same knife. You'll spread disease. Not that your organs have disease, but you don't want to do that. Okay, it's like stabbing different people with the same needle. You cut off the old roots and then you drain a pot just where the plant is and so the roots are down below. But it wants to be stable because they're sort of crazy cats. Even if you're going to load it on a tree or on a plat, if it wiggles, it's not going to root. It wants to be solid and firm. Now, if you use the wire, you can actually hurt it and cut it. So you use a string, butcher string, I used to say old lady, old ladies nylons, but my wife doesn't let me say that anymore. <laughs> but you can use some old piece of lingerie or something, you know, <laughs> roll it up a little and tie it, just so it's secure until it grows. If you're potting it, it's going to wiggle in the pot. So you need a pot clip. Some people just take little stakes or a little piece of a metal. Um, what would you call these metal poles we buy at Home Depot? It's just a piece of metal that's like a stake, but it's metal instead of a stake. You can cut a clip of it and put it across the pot and hold the plant, or put a stake inside and tie it with a tie until it's starting growing on its own and it doesn't need it anymore. Some seedlings, I'm going to say this if you buy from other people, most orchid nurseries grow in sphagnum moss and then you pot them up. We don't do that. But if it's in sphagnum, you want to continue growing in sphagnum. If it's in bark, you want to continue growing in bark. We have pass-out sheets, and I was talking about putting it in a pot and just spraying it, and then Mary, it's on Mary, Mary on the sheet here. And if I could show this, please. We were very honored that the American Orchid Society published this last year, our article called Shambo Fever Sweeping America and the Caribbean. This went around the world, and now 
I was hearing from everyone, but all the nurseries are making shampoo hybrids because to them it means money. To us, it was just a hobby. But anyway, Mary Lou brought, uh, uh, Mariana brought a few articles to share with you if you haven't seen this before or if you're interested. And if you're not interested, don't take one. <laughs> okay. Shops and shop members die from too little water rather than too much. They're not a cactus, they're not water lilies. Okay? Water, let them dry, water, let them dry, water, let them dry. During the winter, we water twice a week. We're good. Water, we water twice a week, and now that we're opened up the greenhouse, it's starting to get warm. We water three times a week, but then it dries, drip dries, goes through. Water, let it dry. Water, let it dry. Remember the rainforest. Many of them come from, they get wet almost every day, but then they dry immediately. Don't let it get too dry.